having fun? I don't care. <laughs> Hello everyone. So I've arrived with my beast. Welcome to the morning chat. A little bit different. So Dirk took his bike here and we thought we'd just show it to you. And then we got He wants there. to show it off. Yeah, how about we go in, how about we go inside and talk about what we can do with this, hey? Okay, alright. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, your motorbike. You like it? It's time to sell it, isn't it? Time to oh. <laughs> Yeah, you're up here in Toowoomba. What are you saying? You're Nature. too old. Uh, I think he wants bike. me to get an e-bike. Yes. Oh, the, just like the me electric now. bike. Yes. <laughs> I mean, this one you can't even get out of the shed properly. Oh, it requires a bit of maneuvering. Yeah, yeah. Back, as well, back, back and forth. It's a beast. So basically, think, ah, mm. oh, do I do that or am I not going in the bike ride? You probably say, ah, oh, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> so but you have looked at e-bikes, haven't you? Oh, I have, I have, but I still come back to my bike. Okay. It's like, oh, all yeah, right. oh yeah, oh right. yeah. So what's good about it? Oh, brum brum brum. Yeah, you, you like it? Oh yeah. So cruising and... I started off with bikes yeah. before I had a car license, so I had a bike license. Oh, serious? So there was a farm bike and then when I was allowed to graduate out of that, it was a speed bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I met Penny. And then it kind of like, you know, got domesticated into a stereo and a bed and all sorts of other domestic yeah, things, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, sold. And so for a long time, I've been pining and then I had my midlife crisis and bought myself a cruiser. So we're going to have the newspaper in one hand, a cappuccino in the other one, sit back and just enjoy the ride. <laughs> so it's just for fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a second pair of wheels. Yeah. No, I, I love the motorbike when I had it. So, um, but yeah, I'm, for me, it was time to give it away. <laughs> so yeah, I relax too much on it. Like, you know, on the cruiser, you, you go daydreaming, just enjoying it. And you can't really afford that on the bike. Hey, well, I actually had to learn to ride the bike in a different way because the cruiser is actually sort of sitting back like this, right? Yeah, you can just Whereas, fall asleep. You know, it's a different riding condition. It's like, you know, like this. Oh yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. yeah. And the first time I got on it, I thought, what is going on with this bike? It took such a long turn because I had to actually learn how to do um, oh, know, yeah, counter yeah. steering. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. completely different, yeah. Yeah, I had to change my ways. Hey, so motorbike, probably one of the greatest objectives on a motorbike, and you're really conscious of it, is that you arrive safely. Well, you know, this is why I've got the jacket, I've got the gloves, I've got the helmet, because Penny said, if you're going to go on the bike again, I don't want any accidents. Yes. And I've been with guys who've come off, yes. you know, broken bones, skin loss. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want yeah. to arrive safely. Yeah. And, yeah, you want to last the distance. you got to be concentrating all the way. So you arrive safely. And that probably brings yeah. us, you know, to the thing that we want to share this morning is in the Christian life, uh, in the Bible, it's described as a race, as you know, you, you enter into something and it's important to finish. And it's not finished until it's finished. So um, I, I'm a bit impressed by two people in, in the Bible. One is the Apostle Paul. And like, you know, amazing apostle, signs, wonders, prophecy, uh, founding congregations, he's a mighty apostle. And then he says in 1 Corinthians 9, he compares the Christian uh, faith or walk discipleship to a race and he wants to finish it and, and and at this late stage in his life he says no i beat my body that's first corinthians 9 verse 27 i beat my body and make it my slave so that after i have preached to others i myself will not be disqualified for the prize yeah so, yeah you know a mighty man of god so much authority he's aware he can't he can't afford not to pay attention to his body, to, not to give in to lust, to greed, to unforgiveness, to laziness, whatever, because otherwise you may actually lose it. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? Disqualified. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, in terms of, oh, that's a, that's a huge word in yeah. terms of, I, I remember, oh, I think it was the Australian Commonwealth Games when they had it here, and I was watching the walkers, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, because this is a different, you know, from the marathons, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, when they do the walking, yeah. and they always have the judges, and then they sort of say, wrong, because I don't know what the technicality is about it, I'm looking at this, and then of course it's like disqualified, yeah. you're out. Yeah, 
And it could be after 38 kilometers yeah. or whatever and just, yeah. yeah. I mean, how scary is the thought that you may have done such good work in the kingdom of God and then right at the end, you know, you rest on your laurels, you, you just slip up and you actually lose your inheritance, your eternal inheritance. So it's interesting about that run the race to the finish. Yes. You know, when, and I think that's a, a long time ago, it was part of a um, teaching other pastors, you know, in, in yeah, mentoring. Yeah, yeah. And I remember out of that, there was a there was focus on f learn how to finish well. Yes. You know, because the yeah. thing is that, you know, even as pastors, you can come into places of burnout or being cynical you, or being, you know, dismissive because yeah, you sort of think, I've tried that, I've done that. And you kind of like, disqualify yourself from where God might actually lead you. Yes. And it clouds everything that yeah. went before. I mean, you know, how sad is it in the Bible? Um, King Solomon. You yeah. Know, the wisest man on earth. Like, Richest man. Had everything from God given to him. Wisdom from God. Like yeah. other people come from other countries. And then it, it, in the end, as an old man, he's so unwise. Yeah, how many wives did he have? A thousand? Or yeah, but the problem wasn't like, just the wives. Yeah, he Every worshiped. wife, he had a different God coming yeah, into them. And he worshipped other gods. Yeah. Like, how can that happen to the wisest man? And Talking about compromise. I mean, he had the political compromise down pad, didn't he? But, I'll have God in my corner and I'll have the world. But yeah. how does it happen? Yeah. Like, I think you become complacent because you have such a good track record. You know, and after a while you become infallible. Like... Oh, I have done so many really good things and then you think you know it automatically continues and it doesn't it's interesting about you know like a motorbike or run the race you can actually have a really good start but the race is not actually the start the start is a start yes and if you sort of yes. say hey I've, I've, I've done a really good job at starting yes and you think you've arrived well no, you haven't arrived you just had a really good start yes but the other thing is that you can actually also have a lousy start. And yet, if you keep your eyes fixed on the prize, you could probably even be better at it than the person who had a great start and then rests on their laurels, like you yeah, said. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah. hey, you know, how I've, I've reached my peak. Yeah. Surely not. But, no, you know, no. some people think that, you know, yeah. hey, we had great stuff in my personal conviction, my faith, my church, what have you, where you sort of think, you know, is the best past or is the best yet to a come? The best. Or, or like, you know, it's a race, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. And so um, it's according to God what pace we're running. Sometimes we're in lockdown like right now mm. and, you know, everything is just shut down a bit. But the call upon us is to be faithful, to discipline our body, to just keep our eyes focused on, on Jesus and do what he asks us to do. And move on with him until it's finished. And so you had two guys, Paul, who said, I'm going to run the race. I'm going to finish. I hope I don't get disqualified. Who's the other one? Oh, yeah. We do that in another morning chat. Another? Stay tuned. There's okay. more. Okay. That's our encouragement for today. Let's be like Paul. Like if Paul can be like that and um, be aware even with everything good that's happened in his life, that we've got to watch ourselves to be faithful and not disqualify ourselves. That's good advice and encouragement. Like, we're in the same boat as Paul. Well, <clears throat> just to finish it off, to finish well on a bike, you've got to keep your eyes on the road. You've got to keep your eyes fixed on, on where you need to go. And I think scripturally speaking, it's yeah. like that Hebrews, keep your eyes fixed on Christ, the author and perfecter of your faith. Because otherwise, you might actually get yourself disqualified. Because if I, as you know, on a yeah, bike, yeah, yeah, yeah. if I went riding like this, watching yeah, you know, yeah. what else is going on, bang. Bang. Okay, have a wonderful day. Finish well. Bye for now. Stay safe.